Okay, so uh, Jim and I decided to get this great shot with these wonderful free-range cows here uh, and use it as a great opportunity to talk about the materials inside the car. See, this is the brave one here. He's just chilling, man. We'll call him Blackie. Um, I guess I watched too much of Narcos. Anyway, uh, so remember we talked about the Kia Nero, how the interior, the tactile feel was a lot better? Can't really say that the Hyundai is better than the Kia or the Kia is better than the Hyundai from like a tactile feel, but what I can say is this one has a lot of exotic materials. Like for example, the headliner and the carpet is partially made out of sugar cane, uh, the paint partially made out of soybean oil, uh, and then the piece de resistance, the plastics partially made out of uh, powdered wood and volcanic stone. So um, I'm gonna go back and see if I can catch up with the cows here. Because look, it's only Blackie left. I'm gonna see if he'll talk to the patron. Okay, so I feel like we've driven a lot of different versions of this car, but now we have full electric, so there's no gas engine whatsoever. And we have some rain. So with that, put her in drive, and let's put our foot into it. It goes. It doesn't have quite the neck snapping torque that other EVs have. Not a sports car, but it's not exactly designed to be a sports car. In the tech review, you and I covered some of the lightweight components that goes into building one of these. For example, some of the body panels and some of the suspension pieces. But there's a whole other area of lightweighting, and it all has to do with the EV propulsion system, whether it's the plug-in or the full electric like this. For example, the batteries. We've seen this in old electric cars where they literally are a lot of old type cylinder batteries that are made up into these big battery packs that are very heavy. Then starting with the Volt, when we first drove that, they did a lithium ion polymer battery pack and there's a bunch of them made up and they can be flat and put anywhere in the car to change the actual packaging of the vehicle. So it's not just lightweight, it's also better packaging, better driving dynamics, hence a full electric here. But more specific to this case was the electric motor and the logic was something like this. If they could reduce the thickness or at least the size of some of the components, they could reduce the weight, thus saving more weight in the overall package. And yes, before all the hateful comments come in, I would trade one to maybe three miles of range to have a hole cut in the roof of my car. Let me try this trick again. We got a nice little uphill here. And change the drive mode, so a little button here. And there's also an eco mode, but we're not gonna waste our time with that. We're gonna go straight to sport mode, which also changes the TFT screen. Neat little touch there. Um, okay, put our foot into it, let's try it. Actually, a little bit of wheel spin, controlled by the computers, but a little bit of wheel spin. I, I think it would be fun to be able to turn off those computers and see what this thing does. Uh, a little bit quicker. It is, it is not the placebo that that Volkswagen... Oh, look at that! It really wants to kind of break loose. This is actually kind of fun to drive. An EV, people, from Hyundai. Or do you remember those commercials uh, when they got an award and they showed the boardrooms of the different uh, German car manufacturers and they were all getting yelled at? And the one BMW guy was like, Hyundai hat gewonnen! Hyundai hat gewonnen! Okay, anyway, I digress. So in the tech review, you and I looked at the interior of two different versions of the Ionic. The uh, standard old hybrid electric, as well as the plug-in hybrid electric. This one is the electric, so things are a bit different. The designers, they decided to follow today's trends, which I'm not particularly fond of, and that is to get rid of the bit of the console that goes from here to here. Now, I see why they do that. You don't necessarily need the gear stick in an electric vehicle, uh, so you can make more room here, so that is the function. Uh, but that also means that you get push buttons here. Not my favorite at all. So I, I want to turn this into like a bonus question this episode. Do you like this or do you not like this? Are you like me where I prefer more the form, the flowing form, rather than the function? Uh, let me know in the comments below or via our social media.
Okay, so let's do something you normally don't do with an EV, at least an EV like this, and that's go around a turn. Um, yes, we're still in sport mode. It doesn't really affect the driving dynamics. There aren't any adjustable dampers. The biggest thing that jumps out at you is the lack of the two propulsion systems. And that transforms the car. So let's put our foot into it a bit. We got a nice little S turn. I'm not pushing it that hard on any other like declining radius turns. But a nice S turn coming up here. And look what happens. Nothing. No lean. But this is a much more balanced vehicle than the hybrid. Dare I say fun to drive? I actually did spend some time driving around downtown Santa Barbara with this. And I got to tell you, especially now that it's got a sunroof, I would totally rock this thing as a daily. So in summary, what do we got? An unusual circumstance in that we've had the opportunity to drive now three flavors or maybe four flavors of effectively the same platform. A hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, and now a full-on electric. And really no surprise, this is my favorite version of this sort of C-segment car, and that's for obvious reasons, the on-demand instant torque. But it's a little bit more than that. This package works considerably better with just the single propulsion system. And I don't mean just from the zero torque, but also from the driving dynamics. Now granted, of course I'm going to complain about something, and yes, I would prefer the multi-link rear suspension in the back, but in this case, I might give it a pass because of the packaging of the batteries. Now, I gotta believe Herr Biermann could probably sort out a solution to get both the multi-link and the batteries. That would be my only uh, suggestion of improvement. Now, I need to put this aside here and uh, turn this around to you guys because I wanna present you guys with a question. And this, as some of you have been watching this episode, probably has been the obvious question. This is a hell of a package for under $30,000. It's a full-on electric car. It's got some luxury in it as well. But here's the catch. It's 124 miles in range. Now granted, before I left the hotel today, it was 126 miles in range. But guess what? The elephant in the room is no longer Toyota. It's General Motors with a Bolt, but for over 200 miles in range. So my question is this, would you want this that is a bigger, more, I would say, attractive vehicle, or would you trade the size and luxury for more range? And don't just tell me which one you would choose, tell me why you would choose it, and also, are you currently driving an EV? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV all one word, Moto Man TV all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy new updated mobile application, which works great for season seven. And oh, by the way, we are live on five, count them, five international airlines. And number two, I want to leave you with a fun fact. So Jim and I have been racing to get all the stand-ups for these episodes, all three of these episodes done today, Thursday, February 15th, because tomorrow we're told again here in the California Republic, the sky is going to open. Now, I want to point out, I have never complained that over the past 60 days, it has been raining nonstop here in California. Now, just in case you haven't believed me in the past, what, eight or 10 episodes, that I've been telling you it has been pissing down rain here in the California Republic. Here is your proof. What used to be a field is now a very large pond. Like, you could assemble hippos, lions, and elephants, and they could drink out of this. There is so much water. Yet still, whatever they call themselves, these social justice warriors, they still complain that there's a drought. And granted, I'm not complaining, because we could definitely use more rain, but this, this is a step in the right direction. Until I see you next time, bis später.